This is Jonathan Agar for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Dan Raphael here in Las Vegas for Canelo against Golovkin, the trilogy this Saturday. Dan, good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm looking forward to a great fight. I don't know about you, but it does feel kind of like last week that we were here for Canelo against Bivol, but that was four months ago now. Um, you said to me after the fight that you think he shouldn't take the rematch and he should take this fight. Did he make the right call, and why do you think he chose this instead of the Bivol rematch? Well, I mean, given the option between the two, which is really the only two options that he had at that moment, you know, there was no reason to tangle with Bivol again. You, it wasn't the, the fight didn't do the kind of business to justify him accepting the rematch or asking for the rematch. This is a fight that's a much bigger fight commercially. There's a lot more uh, notoriety to this fight. Gennady is a not I won't say he's better than Bivol, but he's a more well-known opponent. It's a guy that he's forcing, to, not forcing, but he's coming up in weight to challenge for uh, Canelo's titles instead of Canelo going back to light heavyweight to challenge for the other guy's titles. And it's a fight that a lot of people wanted to see. I think there's far more public demand to see Gennady and Canelo do it for the third time than there would ever have been to see Canelo do it against Bivo for the second time, particularly in light of the fact that it wasn't like it was controversial. Canelo lost the fight. It was, it was competitive, but there's nobody out there that says, I think Canelo Alvarez won. So there's no shame in losing the fight. You, you gave it the effort. Now come back to your weight class where you're the champ and take on uh, the, the biggest name you can. It's a much bigger fight commercially and more fans want to see it and uh, that's what he's doing now. Doesn't discount the possibility that post Triple G Canelo 3 that maybe he'll go back uh, and have a rematch with Bivol at some point but it just didn't make any sense for him to do it uh, at this moment and I said that at the time I, I didn't Monday morning quarterback I said it right there in the press room afterwards he'd be crazy to have the rematch right away you know I quoted the the, the great uh, line from the film Rocky 2 when you've got them talking about Apollo Creed trying to go for the rematch against Rocky and uh, you got a Apollo's manager saying we don't we don't need this man in our life we don't you know he's all wrong for us baby all that and it's the same exact situation Bivol you know he does not need him in his life take the fight with Triple G how did you score the first two fights uh, between Canelo and Golovkin well I was ringside for both of them and for the first fight uh, like pretty much everybody except for the you know the one of the well two of the judges I guess uh, I scored the fight for Gennady Golovkin uh, I don't remember my exact score I want to say eight to four maybe it was seven to five but it was in that ballpark and uh, certainly Triple G with the victory and in the second fight uh, I had the fight I had the second fight was the actual draw and there was a, there was many of us at ringside that had the second fight a draw and the, those who was who didn't have it a draw most of those folks had Gennady as the winner and far far fewer had it that Canelo was the winning of the second fight so in my mind Triple G is one win no losses and one draw do you go along with what a lot of people are saying that if Canelo wins this fight decisively that and I mean by knockout uh, that Golovkin retires? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. And I never like to, uh, I, I, if I said to you yes or no, either way, it's just a guess. You don't know what's in the man's heart and his mind until he makes that announcement. Um, I think a lot of it will depend on how the fight goes. And after that, he'll see. I mean, he still is a viable name. If he still enjoys doing it, if he's not too beat up or anything like that, uh, I don't see a reason why he would have to retire. But certainly if he wants to, he's going to make a tremendous amount of money for this fight. He's been making a tremendous amount of money for his recent fights. Uh, he, it's not like he has to fight, uh, but he's a fighter. So I'm always skeptical when you're going into these big events where the, the, there's questions and pressure. You know, if you lose, you're going to retire. Who knows? Um, Canelo said throughout this build-up, this is a personal fight for him. Do you get the impression that that stems from what happened against Bivol? He's putting kind of that pressure on himself to perform, knowing that he can ill afford a second defeat in a row. Or do you think it's genuine animosity? I think he, I think it may be a little bit of both. He knows that you know getting a second loss in a row would be very detrimental to his career, obviously. But there's also uh, his. Uh, long, it's, I won't, it's like a, like a, if you have a splinter, it just like throbs, it aches, and it's just annoying as hell. And that's what I feel like he thinks about Triple G because of all that stuff that he said about him uh, around their second fight because of the failed drug test. So there's definitely some animosity there. And, and, and the thing that Triple G has done that probably irritates Canelo also, he hasn't really responded to it. He hasn't given him like the, the, the ability to show his own emotion like he's just kind of blowing him off saying get away from me kid 
uh, and that's got to be annoying also, almost you know condescending, but in like a in like a smart ass kind of way. Like, so I think there's a combination of knowing trying to motivate himself, psych himself up for how big this fight is for his career, but also having a sense of just been bugged by all the stuff that's been going on between them for the last four years. Now, the cynic in me says, well, if you were that, taking it that personal and you were that annoyed by it, why'd you make Triple G wait four years for the fight? You could have done it any time. But that's, uh, you know, that's, that's Canelo's uh, own situation. He was doing other things and maybe wanted to deprive him of the payday, maybe wanted to wait him out a little bit, let him get to be 40 years old, who knows? Eddie Hearn said on record that this is 10 times bigger than Spence against Crawford because of the names and how, how well they've done on pay-per-view over the years. Do you go along with that, that this is a much bigger fight than Spence Crawford? I don't agree with that. I mean, Eddie's entitled to his opinion. And, uh, you know, Eddie, Eddie knows the business. He's been around a long time. Uh, I, don't, I don't disrespect his opinion about, about that sort of thing at all. I respect Eddie's opinions. Uh, I just don't agree with that. I mean, and, and even if, you, even if we, I were to say that he's right that it's bigger, and 10 times bigger, please. That what that means is that this fight would do a million pay-per-view buys and that that fight would do 100,000 pay-per-view buys. Here's the reality. That fight does way more than 100,000 buys, and this fight does way less than a million buys. So, you know, it's somewhere in between uh, uh, 10 times and not 10 times. We're obviously waiting for that uh, Spence Crawford announcement. Uh, what's your understanding of where we're at with that? Just that they're still trying to hash things out, trying to get squared away with Crawford. Hopefully it will get done. And uh, final one, uh, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury look to be in talks for a December 3rd fight. Joshua's accepted terms. Um, what's your thoughts on the fight? My thoughts are that uh, I hope it gets made. It's a, it's a fantastic event and a, a very interesting fight if it does. And boxing fans would love to see it. And it makes sense for Fury if Usyk's unavailable. Um, it makes sense from some standpoint from Anthony Joshua because it's an opportunity to, to brush off what happened with Usyk and go right back in the ring against the guy that's even considered better than, you know, in terms of where they're ranked in the heavyweight division. It's a huge British fight. I hope it happens. Dan, appreciate your time. My pleasure, man.